The stage is yours. Thank you so much. Thank okay. you. Firstly, thank you everyone for coming and staying this late. I know it's really, really exhausting. Some people fell asleep, but I'm glad, uh, I'm glad we're that comfortable with each other. Um, that we can, you know, absolutely, all that honesty. Um, it's really good meeting everyone here and it's quite comforting knowing um, that I'll all see you in hell. I think it's great. All these kuffar, blasphemers, you know, it's really good that everyone is going to go hell together. Also, it's... Um, um, being here for the last couple of days, it's like I felt like I was in back, back in school. And you know that feeling when you fail, fail an exam? And then it's like, oh, crap. But then you find out all your friends have failed too. <laughs> so it's not that bad. It's not that bad. <laughs> we failed, but we kind of succeeded. It's okay. It's okay. Um, also, uh, there's so many people here from all around the world, different countries, different regions. Um, are there any Arabs here? Make some noise if you're Arab. Make some noise. Okay, not too much noise, you might scare the rest of us. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, good stuff. Um, without sounding too, you know, direct, but all of this is kind of your fault. <laughs> it's, it's, let's get real, we're amongst friends, it's kind of your fault. If it wasn't for your boy Muhammad, who had a midlife crisis, <laughs> locked himself in a cave, spoke to angels, you know, had to change the whole world. If it wasn't for him, you know, you guys are like, um, our white people, you know, <laughs> you know, it's true, it's true. And I honestly think we should demand reparations, but um, I have my reparations from Arabs. My wife is Arab, so th that's called reverse colonialism, you know, take it out, take it out on her. But um, you know what they say, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Do we have any Turks? Make some noise if you're Turks. Make some noise, man, come on. Who, come on, you're such a pathetic Turk, yes! Come on! Come on, you guys, man, you guys were, you know, going back to the, the Greeks versus the Trojans, the Trojans, that, that, those were the Turks, right? The Eastern Roman Empire, that was Turkey, right? The Ottoman Empire, that was Turkey. Now, hair transplants and teeth, that is Turkey. Look how the mighty have fallen. Do we have any Nigerians? Nigerians? Nigerians, hello? Nigerians, yeah? Okay, I'm glad you're here. Can you stop sending me emails about my credit card number, please? I'm not going to respond to your emails anymore, okay? I'm sick and tired of it. From Baba Tunde. I'm done. I'm done. Do we have any Somalis in the house? Somalis, one Somali. Any more Somali? Another so what are ya? All right, do we have any Abdis? Any Abdis here? No? Okay, awesome. Um, Somalis are great fun, um, but please don't start making mess or anything. I'm the captain now. Eyes on you, baby. Eyes on you, okay? Um, what about any... Uh, I know the answer to this question already, but um, do we have any desis here? So that's a proper response. That's a proper response. There are desis here, as in Pakistanis, Bangladeshis, Indians, because we're every bloody where. <laughs> we're bloody everywhere. Oh, I'm sick and tired of it. You go to Norway, there's bloody desis. Oh, what the hell? Which country am I in right now? Right? And uh, if you have roads, we all drive our taxis on them. Okay, if you go to a street corner, we'll build a convenience sh uh, shop. If, you, if your food is a bit bland, we'll bring our spices. If you have deodorant, we won't use it. <laughs> no, thank you. We want to smell like our home countries. Thank you very much. Okay, what about Iranians? Do we have... A okay, Iranians. Fantastic. Oh, sh oh. Thank you, Iran... Sorry? You're going to be disappointed. Okay. I'll, I'll be nice to Iranians. Iranians, I'm, I'm not going to lie, they sound kind of scary. Iranians, ooh, that's dangerous, that's threatening. But Persians, ooh. <laughs> Persians are very nice and cuddly and cultured people, right? And I actually think we've heard so many stories coming from Iran, very dangerous stories about women. I mean, 10, 20 years ago, nuclear weapons and death to the West and all this kind of stuff. And, um, but I think there's people in the West that um, underestimate what's happening in Iran. And I think that's down to their language, because Farsi is a very beautiful language. Even when I hear Khomeini speak, I'm like, is he flirting with me? <laughs> I'm like you, like, you know I'm, firstly I'm not, uh, firstly I'm straight, and secondly I'm married. <laughs> Fine, here's my number. <laughs> I'll be waiting for your call. Yes, uh, I want to uh, ins inspect your nuclear warheads, please. Okay. 
And, and I, I, think, I think the language is very seductive and soft and alluring, like, you know. Um, meanwhile, in Iraq, it, they're like, well, Lahi, brother, I have nothing. I have no weapon. And American like, yeah, we don't believe you. Iran is like, we're going to kill everyone. We're uh, 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 oppressing a woman. We're like, stop being silly. Stop it. <laughs> Come on. Um, and just um, when you hear Arabic, it's a bit scary sometimes. You're thinking, do I need to run for cover? Do I need to hide? When you hear Hindi, you're like, um, are you my Uber driver? <laughs> I actually had this before when I just walked into a shop. This was in London. I, I didn't even say anything. I just walked in and the guy goes, what, oh, mate, are you my um, Uber Eats? And I'm like, no, I didn't, no, I'm not. I'm just here to get some fish and chips. Like, what? Like, I, didn't even, I didn't even say anything. I think it was a smell. So <laughs> it must have been the smell. Um, but yeah, um, growing up, um, I, being, being Pakistani, my, my family wanted, to me, uh, wanted me to be, become a doctor. So uh, I studied really hard, but unfortunately, I didn't get the grades. They were quite disappointed, so I kept at it. I didn't want to disappoint them. So I became one of the biggest doctors in the world. I became Dr. Zark and Nike. <laughs> and um, I was like, that's not what we quite had in mind. But I'm very good at being a constant disappointment to my parents, so yeah. Um, but I was, you know, growing up as a Muslim, I watched a lot of Zark and Nike videos. I was just, you know, you know what? You I, I had that in mind, so don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, so I, I watched a ton of his videos. You know, I was really, really impressed by he. He could memorize any book, any religion, anything. Chapter five, verse number two, is clearly mentioned, right? You'd ask him about question about anything here. Chapter five, verse number two, volume three, page number three. I'm like, oh my god, this guy's amazing. Zaki Nike was Chat GPT before Chat GPT. <laughs> I don't think he gets enough credit. Okay, I honestly think Amazon, you know you have Amazon Alexa? They should have a Zaki Nike version of Amazon Alexa. <laughs> Can you imagine, just you be around the house and be like, okay, I need to, a dinner date, I wanna, okay, where do I go out for, for dinner for my wife? You'd be like, dogs are like, uh, dog, dogs are like, doot doot. Yes, brother. Um, where do I take my wife out for dinner? She's like, the brother asked a very good question, he said. He wants to take his first wife out for a halal meal. <laughs> That's not what I quite said, but okay, sure. Uh, but let me tell you that according to the book of restaurants, <laughs> chapter five, verse number two, it is clearly mentioned that there are four halal restaurants in your area. <laughs> but only one has gender segregation. <laughs> it is called what the falafel. <laughs> it is 20 minutes away. Would you like me to call you a camel? That was amazing, right? That, that, that is the kind of answer, the clarity that I need in my life, okay? But, but I think um, I, I wouldn't want to get a Jordan Peterson Alexa. I think I would regret asking him the same question. Yeah, he'd be like, so um, yeah, Jordan Peterson, I want to go out on a dinner date. Do you, you know, would you recommend many places? And he'd be like, and you'll be like, uh, well, that depends. Um, are you hungry for food or for knowledge? <laughs> no, no, I'm hungry for food. I want to go out on a dinner date. Uh, yeah, you won't last a week in the gulags. <laughs> okay, okay, not, not to get political, Jordan Peterson, but I just want to eat, and I really, really want to impress my wife. So where can I take her out? Who we say something like, well, if you want to climb the dominance hierarchy, you have to stand tall like a lobster. I'm like, lobster? I haven't taken her out for lobster yet. And you have to face your fears and go into the belly of the well and fight the postmodernist, postmodernist. Okay, okay, you know what? I'll take it. Okay, thank you, thank you. I'm taking the batteries. I'll clean your room. <laughs> so, Zaki Knight, yes, Jordan Peterson, no. Okay, awesome. Um, there's many, many uh, experiences that I've had over the last 10 years uh, coming out as an ex-Muslim. And when you come out as an ex-Muslim, you have this whole other online community and in-person as well of other ex-Muslims. And they're like, yeah, you know, you're cool, we're friends, you're this, all this, uh, you know, adding you on Facebook and Twitter and all this kind of stuff and meetups. But there's also, you get a lot of friend requests, and you can tell me if I'm wrong here, from a lot of Hindus and Christians, and you're like, hang on a second, how, how is this, we're, we're, how are we, are we, are we cool? And it's like, almost like you win the lottery, and then you get really long distant relatives you've never met before, <laughs> knocking at your door like, hi, you, you remember me? And we're like, no, no, I've never met you in my life before, but where did you come from? And it's like, we've been watching you very closely, 
And it's like, you have? He goes, yes, we've been watching it and we've been waiting for you guys, to, for, waiting for you to come out. Like, come out and do what? Join our team. Like, what team? Like, don't worry, we know you're one of the good ones. Uh, and, it's, and that's a very uncomfortable, uh, weird relationship you have to uh, navigate as well. Also, and I think um, some people touched on this uh, yesterday as well, that one of the accusations we get is that uh, you're a fake ex-Muslim, you know? They do this to sort of, uh, um, sort of uh, delegitimize our cause and our voice. So you were never really Muslim in the first place. Um, you're just doing this for fame. You're doing it for money. You're doing it for um, all these other reasons. You're funded by the Jews. Um, I wish we were. <laughs> that would have made our lives a lot easier, I think. Uh, if there are, any, are, there, are there any Jews here? Are there any Jews? Okay, we've got a Jew here. Um, can I speak to your manager? <laughs> because, okay, thank you. Because we've been doing a lot of work and we haven't received the checks yet. <laughs> and we were talking about funding. I think we could, you know, thank you very much. I just want to say that, yeah. Um, but, but that was a big thing about fake ex-Muslims. And I think our experience has been that, like the over, my experience has been the overall majority of ex-Muslims that I've um, spoken to have been real. But unfortunately, it's going to get awkward. Um, there has been some uh, experiences that I've had that what I would say ex-Muslim, there are some fake ex-Muslims out there. And I'm going to say that there are some fake ex-Muslims in this room. <laughs> you, you are a fake ex-Muslim, if you were. Shia. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Don't get me wrong. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's, Islam is the wrong religion, but Sunni Islam is the right version of the wrong religion. <laughs> Shia Islam is the wrong version of the wrong religion. So, um, um, don't, you know, but it's okay, I'm just joking. We love you, we accept you. Um, d don't be too harsh on yourselves. It's okay, it's not your fault. Um, what I'm trying to say is don't beat yourself up because we know you guys do that. It's okay. <laughs> you're, not, you're not Muslim anymore. You don't beat yourself up. Um, speaking of uh, wrong sects, um, I think it's worth mentioning the, um, the Ahmadis, right? Uh, where's that? There, there you are. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Ahmadis are like our Mormons. They, 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 they were so, they were so like, they, they loved the, the original content so much, they cr kind of created their own fan fiction and had their own prophet. They were like, we need more of this. Um, and and uh, Ahmadis are like that one friend that no one invites to the party, and they always turn up. And then you're like, do you know that guy? Like, no, no, I, I thought he came with you. No, no, I thought he came with you. And they're like, what are we doing, guys? Where are we going? And it's like, bro, who the hell is that guy? And if you're thinking, who is that friend in your group, and you don't know, you're that friend in your group. You're the Ahmadi of your group if you, if you don't know who that person is. Um, another thing we also hear about from some Muslims online is uh, they say, don't talk about Islam. Okay, fine, we get it, we get it. You've left Islam now, don't talk about it anymore. Like, you, like st stop it, you're obsessed, get over it, okay? And I find this argument quite annoying. And um, it's, it's like, leaving Islam is like breaking up with a very handsome, seductive psychopath. <laughs> it's like, in the beginning, it's very nice and very charming and dinner dates and roses and chocolates and romantic escapes, but then one day you find a closet with a lot of red flags and you're thinking, no, these can't be his. No, no, I know him. He, he, he would never do something like that. It must, may, maybe it's the Jews or the atheists or the Christians and someone else. No, there's no way this is his. And then you dig a bit further and then you find some dead bodies. And you're like, oh, shit, it is him. And then you turn around and he's standing over you with an axe. And he's like, I really wish you hadn't seen that. <laughs> Things were going so well. And out of my love and mercy, I'm going to have to kill you. And then you're running around the house trying to escape, but he's locked the door. Then you go into the bathroom, lock the bathroom. And then it's like in that movie, The Shining, where he's chasing, Jack Nicholson's chasing you with an axe. He goes through the door. He's like, it's Johnny. Uh, we, would, we would stop talking about you if you were to drop your axe and leave us alone. <laughs> right? We would stop. If you stop trying to kill us, I promise we'll stop talking about you. Um, so there was a couple of things, actually, because I remember when I first left Islam with my wife, um, I, we always have this debate who left first, okay? So it's always like a competition, right? But I think I left first, but she was the first to verbalize it. She was the first to say, I'm not Muslim or I don't believe in Islam. Uh, and I remember when she said that, like, my heart stopped. I was like, Are you, you, like, I was so scared. Like, I was like, you can't even say that. Like, even out loud, you can't even verbalize it. 
And then she said, yeah, I don't think Muhammad is a prophet. And I was like, oh my God, you, like, I was so scared. Like the idea of hell as well, I was so scared. 10 years on, of course, I'm not scared of those things anymore, but I am scared of saying other stuff. Like, um, uh, I don't know, like bacon and alcohol are kind of overrated, I think. <laughs> I might have voted conservative. <laughs> and, um, Bismillah. Jaishu, um, I love Israel. Um, Jairastafar, right? I'm getting all the religions on my side. Like, you know Thanos when he gets all the infinity stones. And you so, um, a man is a man and a woman is a woman. Okay, okay thank you. Um, I had to call upon all the religions to get that joke out. All right, cool. Um, another thing that's actually very, very interesting and obviously very serious is the um, the way Islam treats women is disgusting. We've heard so many different stories. And of course, the most famous verse in the Quran, or one of the most famous verses, is around the half testimony of women. You know? And I'd like to, I think it's in a, a verse two, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, chapter two, verse two. You know what, let me do it properly. Chapter two, verse uh, two, verse two. Sorry, there we are. That's better. <laughs> right? In chapter two, verse two, it is clearly mentioned. Okay? I'm not going to do the whole thing. Like, well, you, won't, you won't understand what I'm saying. Um, and it says here, uh, and get two witnesses out of your own men. And if there are not two men, then a man and two women. So if one woman forgets, the other one can remind her. Now, I don't know if anyone here has actually met a woman, but they don't forget. <laughs> Th like, like they, they don't forget. And I think someone with nine wives probably should have figured that out <laughs> with all the constant fighting. Uh, I could be having a conversation with my wife and she would just pluck a memory from 10 years ago and go, boom. And I'm thinking, did I say that? Said, yes, you did. I remember what you said about my mom 10 years ago. I remember what I was wearing. And I'm like, no, I would never say, oh, maybe it was me. Oh, shit. I'm sleeping in the garden, in the garden now. What, how, what, like, what? how the hell did that happen? And I think if, uh, if Muslims wanted to preserve their hadith, they should have let the women memorize it. <laughs> there would be no weak hadith. There would be literally no weak hadith. Their tradition would be solid. All these guys like, wait, well, what did what happened? And who what was it? You know, I swear it wasn't me. Um, you know, and I think if the, like if they had memorized the hadith, it would be very very different. Like I think the hadith of Aisha being nine and six or whatever it may be, I don't think it would have anything to do with the age. I think it would be like, Alif Mim Jim O M G. Did you see what Aisha was wearing on her wedding? <laughs> Black is so fifth century. She's only been around a minute and she's calling herself mother of believers. Who does she think she is? Khaleesi, right? <laughs> Whereas Imam Bukhari's like, and uh, when Aisha got married, she was, hang on a second. Is it six or six? Yo, Abu Dawood, um, how old was Aisha when she got married? Uh, who's Aisha? You know, Aisha, Aisha, like mother of believers, Aisha. Oh, that Aisha, I don't know, man, I can't remember. He goes, what are you doing, bro? Oh, I'm just writing down like all this stuff like that happened. But that happened two year, hundred years ago, bro. Yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. I'm just asking people what they thought of it. What? You're asking dudes? Yeah. Oh, okay. But why do you have to shit on all my ideas, man? Why can't you just support me on this one? So what should I go with, six or, uh, six or 16? Well, you know how women are about their age. You should go for the younger one, right? <laughs> and like, oh, okay, cool, I'm writing it down. Um, but isn't that kind of weird? Like, six is kind of like a child, bro. It's, it's kind of weird because, bro, firstly, no one's going to read this in a thousand years. Uh, Secondly, no one's that weird to think it's okay to marry children. Trust me, bro. I've got this, right? Inshallah, that was. So that was probably the the process for 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 Bukhari. Um, I'm all for integrating and sharing ideas, and I don't believe in cultural appropriation, all this kind of stuff. I think everyone should share from everyone, um, but there are sometimes very rare occasions where doing where taking an, an idea and doing it in something else can be um, misapplied. Like I don't know if you've seen um, hijab porn. Apparently, this is a a genre of porn that's, no? Okay, H hand up. I, put your ha if you're a man, be honest, okay? This is where the truth is gonna come out, okay? Let's see how feminist you really are, okay? <laughs> put your hand up if you don't know who Mia Khalifa is. Uh, one person, okay, you have two options. Either you're gay or you're a liar. <laughs> Choose. So I see we have some fans in the room, okay? But when I was watching, uh, no, no, I, I would never watch. Oh, no, no. Uh, and I, uh, no, no. When I, when someone told me about it, okay, yeah, yeah, from a friend who's got erectile dysfunction. Uh, I'm not joking. Um, but it's, uh, but it's almost like watching it up. I was like, sister, do you want to be seen or unseen? I'm a bit confused right now. Even Shaitan is like, is this alhamdulillah? Or is this astaghfirullah? Like, which one? Is this halal or is this haram? I don't even know right now. Like, you know, um, 
it's almost like watching someone say bismillah and eat some meat. Like, you can't just say bismillah and put any meat in your mouth. It doesn't work like that, all right? Okay. <laughs> One person got that joke. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but yeah, so I think, um, just, just to finish, I think uh, we've had a fant fantastic, fantastic day. Uh, fantastic two days. And one thing I would say, and this is on, on a slightly serious note, is that leaving Islam is very, very difficult. We've spoken about many different things, but I think one of the things that I can really share is that, you know, you, I think you take a, a huge hit with your family relations when you, when you leave Islam. And when you come to these kind of conferences in person, I know online is uh, something else, but when you come in person, you, you sort of are accepted into a bigger family, um, just as dysfunctional as your real one. Um, but maybe not as uh, as violent or threatening. So thank you, everyone. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Cheers. Yeah, well done. Thank you.